If you thought you were destined to find a mythical treasure, what would you do? You'll be forced to team up with a ragtag crew to fight brutal soldiers, vicious pirates, and mutated clowns, and you'll need to find a boat to even have a chance of finding the One Piece treasure. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the East Blue Quadrant in One Piece Part 1. This crew is going to risk their lives in order to find the most valuable treasure in the world. Luffy here is a wannabe pirate with an insane power and is on a stupid quest to find the most valuable thing in this world, the One Piece treasure, and become king of the pirates. Sailing on this boat, he desperately tries to recruit this random seagull to join his crew, but his persuasion skills suck, and that's when the boat suddenly starts sinking. Unable to swim, he quickly hops into this empty barrel because nothing will stop him. Quickly falling asleep inside, he unknowingly comes across a battle between innocent sailors and one of the most horrifying pirates of all time. A pirate that we all know, weebs. Captain Alvida. Unleash your anime obsession on metal canvases. Oh, I'm so excited. Experience the magic of anime like never before with Displate. Displate is the future of hassle-free posters and their 21st century metal art brings your favorite anime scenes to life, capturing every detail in HD brilliance. They're so freaking good that you'll forget that you don't actually have a taxidermied oppa trapped on your wall. The sturdy metal construction ensures that your beloved characters and scenes are displayed with the utmost clarity and vibration vibrancy, and you'll have designs from over 40,000 artists to choose from. So pick from Displate's 1.3 million licensed designs and lay your eyes on your next great anime roommate that'll cutely or creepily stare at you securely from your wall, thanks to Displate's magnet-mounted system, allowing you to snap the metal poster onto anywhere you see fit. Anime heroes face countless challenges, and so does your wall art, I'm not kidding. That's why Displate's metal posters are built to withstand a lifetime of intense staring. Just like those epic anime battles, no fading. No warping. Your posters will remain as captivating as the day you first put them up. I had some come through, and boy do I love them oh so freaking much. HTBA gives 20% off when buying one to two displays and 30% off when buying three or more. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring this video. Finally, we're doing something about One Piece. Gosh, I'm so excited. If I was one of these innocent merchant ships, I would destroy this pirate ship by taking advantage of their psychology and the vital architecture flaw that all ships have. Yes, I'll be talking in a piratey voice throughout the entire episode. You're welcome. These idiots are up against a famous pirate known as Captain Alvida on her boat, known as the Miss Love Duck. Alvida's ship here looks like it's a Dutch flute, judging from the pear-shaped stern, known for its wide, flat bottom, allowing tons of treasure to be carried and a highly customizable layout. Unlike this innocent merchant ship, it makes sense why they chose this ship, because it's badass and can have a great powerful offense. However, this ship here on the left was actually the more preferred vessel for pirates during the golden age of piracy, due to its lightweight nature, which also allowed them to pull off their preferred method of blitz warfare. These types of smaller boats gave pirates a better chance to surprise their enemies last minute by making a huge frightening show of force, forcing the enemy to surrender before the battle even began. However, though, these guys don't have that luxury, since there was no land near Nearby. It's likely they were chased by Alvida's ship until this point, and then decided to turn and fight her broadside to broadside for no reason. Which is interesting, because this ship was made for stealth purposes. Broadside to broadside fighting is when all the guns on one side of the ship are fired at once at another. However, if I was them in, in this shitty ship of a situation, I would focus on the natural weak points that almost all ships have. Cannons like these in generals are very inaccurate. This is why broadside to broadside fighting was so common, because you literally had to get up super close in order to have a more precise shot. However, using our ship's superior mobility, I instead would have opted to cut across this ship's bow, the front, or stern, the back, as the areas of this part of the ship is almost impossible to set up cannons in. With our ship being designed for speed, we could easily sail behind these points before attacking from these angles. The back part of the ships is the most vulnerable. Disabling them enough so they won't be able to catch us means that we'll be able to get away. We are the faster vessel, and we also have to remember that pirates don't like to sink ships, because then you can't steal from them. And this means that even during the battle itself, they would be way more hesitant of trying to fire at our ship because of this reason we have what they want. We would be able to beat this situation by taking advantage of their blind spots and utilizing the lighter ship's speed. The pirates quickly win the battle and begin collecting all the riches from the ship, including Luffy from the sea. Later, this kid named Kobe. Wait, no, no, not that Kobe. Anyways, this twitchy kid cleans the pirates' bloody weapons, and that's when he hears some noise coming from one of the barrels. He goes to check it out, and that's when Luffy pops out from his nap. He tells Kobe that he is a pirate, but he's a good kind of pirate, and he's on a mission to find the One Piece treasure, and he's headed to the Grand Line to find it. Kobe gets shocked and tells Luffy that the Grand Line is known as the Pirate Graveyard. 
filled with bloodthirsty land and sea monsters and thousands of pirates. He will never make it out of there alive. And Kobe says he's nuts and he needs to leave the ship before the pirates wake up. Sneaking him out on the dock, they head to the lifeboats. And that's when Luffy accidentally hits his paddle on this bell, waking up all the pirates, including Captain Alveda. They quickly get surrounded by everyone. Alveda thinks Kobe was trying to escape. He tries to reason with her, but Luffy says that he doesn't have to take orders from a mean person like her, pissing her off instantly. She tries to hit Luffy, but he dodges her attack. And then this guy shoots him, but Luffy's body bounces the bullet back out, stunning everybody as Luffy reveals his powers. His body is made of pure rubber. Captain Alveda tries to attack it, but Luffy slips her attack, making her destroy her ship's steering wheel and causes the ship to catch on fire, pissing her off even more. Alveda tries to take it out on Kobe. Luffy tries to save his life and uses his signature gum gum pistol move, blowing her away and making the other pirates back off. He then tells Kobe to come with him and they escape on the lifeboat. The next day, Kobe finds out from Luffy that he doesn't actually know where the Grand Line is, making him realize that they are lost. Luffy says that, hey, they just need to find a map to help them get there, and then everything will be all right. Kobe tries not to p -p 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 panic, and Luffy tries to calm him down. He asks him what his dream in life is, and Kobe says he wants to become a Marie, but he'll never be able to achieve it. So Luffy then slaps him and says that if that is his dream, then he must never give up, and he'll help him achieve it. They set a course for the closest Marine base, and Luffy says there he'll sneak in to get a map to the Grand Line and continue on his journey. And also, Kobe can sign up to join the Marines. Kobe thinks that they just can't sneak into a military base. But Luffy says, eh, hey, trust him. Later, they reach this base, getting lunch. Luffy thinks about how to sneak in and steal a map. But that's when they see a fight break out nearby. And Luffy watches one of the fighters protect this little girl and fights these Marines. Seeing all the fancy sword moves he does, Luffy sees this green-haired guy do things that he's never seen before. Taking out all three of these Marines down with ease. He then notices also this orange-haired girl in the corner drag this unconscious Marine away. Hmm, I wonder who that is. Meanwhile, though, green hair guy interrogates the leader of this group, scared as hell. The guy tries to calm him down and says that his name is Helmeppo and that his father runs this Marine base and he can give him anything he wants. Green hair guy says that his name is Zoro and he wants to collect his bounty for all the pirates that he's killed so far. Helmeppo then takes him to go meet his father, Captain Morgan. No, not the drink. He tells Zoro that he can collect his bounty, but he must spend a week in jail for first assaulting multiple Marines. Zoro says that he will cut off the hand of anybody who tries to touch him, impressing Captain Morgan, who offers him a job to join the Marines, because he's got serious skill and is useful unlike his useless son. But Zoro says, nah, pissing him off, causing Captain Morgan to put Zoro in jail. Later that night outside, Luffy talks to Kobe about Zoro. He wants to recruit him into his pirate crew as soon as possible, and he tells Kobe he's now figured out a plan on how to steal the map. And he tells Kobe to go get the boat ready tomorrow while he gets ready to sneak into the base. Okay, the journey to the Grand Line means that these guys need to start focusing on finding a badass crew over a badass boat. This is why I would use an extraversion index assignment used to screen for fighter pilots in order to find our new crew members. Let me explain. The journey journey to the Grand Line means that they'll need more than just a badass crew. The Grand Line is a stretch of sea east to west around the planet, known as the most dangerous place on Earth, and a big part is because of the weather. It's unpredictable and dangerous, and the wildlife is much more lethal in the water and also on the islands around it. And this means that we need a stronger crew in order to be able to have a better chance at sailing through the Grand Line. Since the standard rules of meteorology weather don't apply, this means that the general ocean patterns around this area are extremely volatile, and this means that we can expect all types of shit to try and kill us. Water spouts, storms, blizzards, heat waves, thick fogs, cyclones appearing quickly and impossible to predict. Even around the surrounding islands, which have their own distinct climates, all going on at different times. And in a way, this journey will require our members to have qualities similar to what fighter pilots must have, since their job is one of the most stressful jobs in the world, where split-second life or death decisions must be regularly made. So what I will do would be to go to the first town bar and look for recruits, because we need a crew, and then we'll have an easier time snooping around and figure out their past and their hammered. We need to make them stay loyal to us and not screw us over on the journey to the Grand 
the line. I would get ready to bribe them with some ethical, not so ethical types of spoils. The next day, Luffy sneaks into the sewer drain and accidentally runs into Zoro tied up. Luffy tells him that he's impressed by his moves and wants him to join his pirate crew, but Zoro says he kills pirates for a living. So Luffy then unties him for no reason and says that life is more than just killing. It's about friendship and adventure and all that blah, 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 blah. Then he leaves him to continue on with his mission. Heading down into this cellar, Luffy comes across this thief posing as a marine. Confronting her, he finds out that her name is Nami and he tells her that he recognizes her from the bar and says that they're both looking for the map to the Grand Line. He walks past her and says that he thinks the map is in the captain's office. And that's when they run into the captain himself, Captain Morgan. Nami quickly improvises and tells the captain that she is taking this prisoner to jail, tricking him into letting them pass. And then she reveals to Luffy that she just stole the captain's keys. Impressed. Luffy then asks her to join his pirate crew, but she says, ew. Reaching the office, they quickly start looking around for the map. Finding this hidden safe, Nami works to crack it open. But that's when the base alarm sounds off. And Nami tells Luffy that the guards that she knocked out in the cellar have now been just discovered. Does nobody bother to hide the bodies that they knock out? Jeez. Luffy then speeds up the process and wraps his stretchy fingers around the safe. And then he manages to pull the safe and them right out the window, landing in the courtyard. And they quickly get surrounded by guards. But Luffy quickly finds out that Nami also has some sick moves. And that's when Zoro passes by them on his way out of the castle, but stops and decides to help Luffy out. Joining the fight, they all tag team. Captain Morgan then finally shows up, pissed off as hell. Zoro and Luffy try to attack him, but he easily overpowers them. Thinking quickly, they realize that they need to work together and quickly figure out a system of attack. Going high and low, Zoro then uses his famous three sword technique to push Captain Morgan back, while Luffy combos with his gum gum whip move, knocking Captain Morgan out once and for all. Zoro then helps carry the safe out, and Nami says that she has a boat that they can use to get away. Reaching the docks, they get stopped by a certain Captain Morgan's son, Helmeppo, and he holds them at gunpoint. About to kill them, he quickly gets knocked out by Luffy's friend, Twitchy Boy Kobe, at the last minute. Escorting them to the docks, Kobe then tells Luffy that he's going to stay on this island to try and fulfill his dream of becoming a Marine, and he tells them that next time, they might be enemies. But he thanks Luffy for everything, and the two wave goodbye, and Luffy's new crew sails off. Later that night, Nami then finally manages to open a safe. They find a map that will lead them to the Grand Line. But Luffy then realizes that Dai, he, he doesn't know how to read, forcing Nami to become his navigator. And she reads the map and tells them where and what the Grand Line really is. The Grand Line is a treacherous stretch of ocean area that is full of bigger islands, bigger cities, and much more dangerous pirates and monsters that they will encounter. Luffy fills Zoro in about the One Piece. But Nami tells him that it's just a myth. They notice a red flare outside and go to check it out. And then they start collapsing. And Luffy realizes that someone dangerous is coming for them. Acting quick, he swallows Ohm. And he catches a glimpse of the ship headed straight for them, eventually passing out. A while later, they finally wake up and realize that they've been taken hostage. Luffy tells Nami that he's put the map in a safe place and reveals that he thinks that they've been kidnapped by other pirates. But he can talk his way out of this situation because he's such a good communicator. The box suddenly opens up and they discover that they are inside of a circus full of audience members trapped as prisoners. It's strange and this clown enters and then Luffy recognizes his face and says that he saw his wanted poster at the marine base. The clown introduces himself as Buggy the Clown and tells Luffy that him and his friends are in big big trouble. Because you see, his crew had been planning to rob the marine base to steal the map for months before Luffy got to it first. So he had dips and now Luffy must hand over the map or else. And then Luffy says that he will become king of the pirates, making everybody around them laugh. Zoro then threatens Buggy to let them go. But Nami offers this clown a trade. And she tells Buggy that their crew has a unique person in their group. And that Buggy can have him if he lets them go. She then grabs Luffy's precious hat and throws it up into the air, forcing Luffy to use his stretchy powers to reach for it and Buggy sees what Luffy really is, but in doing so, allows Nami to escape the area. Running outside, she sees the whole town around her destroyed and is horrified. Wow, apparently she has a heart. Clearly, she must be traumatized by something. Buggy's minions quickly catch her and drag her back inside of this circus. And Buggy tells them that he overheard Luffy saying that he has hidden the map to the Grand Line somewhere and he will torture all of them until he finds out where it is. And he splits up Zoro and Nami from Luffy and he says he has a special present for this stretchy kid. 
quickly tying him up. He orders his crew to stretch him until his body breaks, but Luffy resists telling him anything. And that's when Buggy comes up with an idea. He tells Luffy that no one ever wants to be a pirate unless they're trying to impress someone, noticing Luffy's strange hat that he now recognizes. And he says that he knew a man who used to wear a hat just like this. As a matter of fact, he's certain that that hat is that man's hat. Somebody that Luffy grew up with, maybe? Basically his daddy. A man called Red-Haired Shanks. Luffy gets shocked and finds out that Buggy used to serve with his father figure, the Navy, when they were both younger. And they both became pirates, but claims that Shanks betrayed him for some reason. Now pissed off more than ever, he orders his servant to stretch Luffy even further. But the man gets too scared and refuses his order. At the end of his rope, Buggy walks over to his audience and threatens to kill this innocent kid. And seeing this, Luffy gets angry and uses his powers to break free and quickly fires his gum gum pistol, shooting Buggy's head clean off and thinks that he's now saved the day. But that was his biggest mistake. Buggy's body continues to keep on standing, and Luffy realizes that he also has powers just like him. Buggy tells Luffy years ago he ate a magical fruit, the Chop Chop fruit, and now he has the power to split up his entire body, and that's when his hand shows up from behind Luffy and knocks him out. Meanwhile, Nami and Zoro work on breaking free inside of this room. And that's when one of Buggy's crew members then enters and claims that Zoro killed and chopped off the head of his pirate brother. And he says that his name is Kabaji and will now make Zoro suffer for his actions. He then spins him around and starts using him as target practice, allowing Nami to quickly brute force her locks free. She goes up behind Kabaji and knocks him out, letting them run off. But back outside, Luffy then finally wakes up inside of this box full of his one weakness, salt water. Buggy tells him that he knows that salt water is the only thing that can take away both of their powers. And now Luffy will drown if he doesn't talk. Barely able to stand, he tells Buggy that his crew will come to rescue him. Buggy laughs long and hard and prepares to watch Luffy drown. But that's when Zoro and Nami bust in and quickly smash Luffy's cage. Freeing him, Luffy gasps for air and accidentally bleh, uh, he threw up the, the map. And that's when Buggy runs to grab it and Nami and Zoro face off against him. And Zoro tells him they have him cornered and he tries to attack him. But that's when they realize what they're really up against. Buggy the clown. And he activates his full powers and splits his body apart. Cornering these two, he easily knocks them back off their feet. But that's when Luffy finally recovers and he gets up. But Buggy deploys his chop chop cannon move, knocking Luffy back. All right, this is crazy. But if I was them, I would defeat Buggy by using the one biological weakness that him, you, and me, and every other person on Earth has. Let me explain. Buggy here is like Luffy, except he ate the Bara Bara no Mi Devil Fruit, which means that he has the power to split his body into multiple pieces and is immune from slashing attacks. However, unlike Luffy, he hasn't trained to utilize the powers completely, and this is how we take him down. Well, he might be strong, yes. He's just like everybody else here and still relies on basic biology. And it's noted that in order to move his body parts, he he needs to see where they are in order to control them, which means he uses his eyes. In order to maintain balance, humans require coordinated efforts of three different body systems. The eyes, the inner ear, and the sensors in the body's muscular system. Using these three, the brain is able to determine the body's position and deploys the strategies it needs to use in order to help the body maintain balance. So what I'm saying, my weebs, is that most people rely on their eyes first over anything else, which means we need to come up from behind him and put a blindfold on him or by finding some alcohol and temporarily blinding him, because this will give us a few moments to try and capture all his body parts in a bag of some kind, rendering him useless. And then from here, we can just club him to death like a baby seal. And then we'll be able to escape while he works on getting his vision back. Knowing they can't beat him with head-on attacks, he thinks fast and calls out to Nami to open those crates in the back. And then Luffy starts timing Buggy's attacks, eventually hitting Buggy's body parts straight back into Nami's crates. Locking each one, they quickly force Buggy to run out of body parts to use, making him helpless. Luffy then activates his gum gum bazooka and blows Buggy far away. Saving the day, he hands the map back to Nami, shocking her since, well, she betrayed him. And he tells her that she is their navigator after all. And then they free all of Buggy's prisoners, allowing them to be done with this side quest. And then the three head back out to sea and continue on with their journey to the Grand Line. On the way there, Nami goes into the ship's cabin for some privacy, but that's when she secretly opens this hidden door. Using this device, she calls somebody and tells them that she has the map. A few hours later, Zoro tells Nami that they now have a huge problem. The boat has a hole and is now leaking. Rushing 
begin to check the damage. She realizes that her secret snail phone thing has been destroyed. Annoyed, she argues with Zoro for not telling her about the problem sooner. And now the group realizes that they need a new boat in order to make it to the Grand Line. Coming up with a solution, Nami says that they should head to a place called the Gecko Island, since it is the closest island to their location. Later, the group reaches the Gecko Island, and Nami tells them to start looking around for a new ride. And she warns them, though, that since they don't have any money to buy a ship, they will have to steal one. But again, <sighs> Luffy is not about that thug life. Tells them that they must get a ship the right way. And these two don't think that's possible. But Luffy says that he will find them a free ship. Looking around, Luffy then suddenly spots the most tantalizingly sexiest piece of wood that he's ever seen in his life. Heading to this boat, he meets this one guy named Usopp, who tells him all about the ship, bragging it's the fastest water beast that he'll ever ride in his life. Excited, Luffy tells him that he wants to have this boat without paying any money and without providing anything in return for it. So Usopp looks at him like he's nuts and says that the boat isn't for sale, and that he doesn't even own it. Zoro and then Nami show up, and Luffy excitedly tells them that they must get this boat and find out from Usopp that he is close friends with the owner of this ship, a rich girl named Kaya, and he says that they could make a deal with her, so he takes them to go see her. After walking for a bit, they finally reach Kaya's mansion and run into one of the people working there. He stops Usopp and tells him that he's not welcome here, but just then Kaya calls out to him. Happy to see him, he says that he's come to wish her a happy birthday and has brought friends to come see her. These are people he just met, and that's when this suspicious looking butler named Kalidor tells Usopp off and he says that he can't just show up without warning. And Kaya begs him to let her friends stay for the night for her birthday dinner. Reluctantly, Kalidor agrees but tells them that they must shower first because they all stink later. Usopp sneaks into Kaya's room to use her secret entrance and gives her his birthday gift. He tells her it's a valuable pearl and makes up some story about how he got it and tells her of his adventures of the outside world and makes her super excited but that's when she starts violently coughing and so he goes goes to get her medicine tea. And she updates him about her health condition, saying she hasn't gotten any better. But his wild stories are keeping her happy. Meanwhile, Luffy's crew prepares for dinner, and Zoro asks the group if they recognize the butler, Kalidor, because he's seen his face somewhere before, but they don't. Luffy then thinks that if he can convince Kaya to give them his ship, and Luffy makes a bet with Nami, who doesn't believe him, and if he fails, they'll do it her way and steal a ship instead. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Kalidor checks on dinner preparations. And he tells his minions that everything must go perfectly tonight because it's their last shot, scaring the hell out of these two. Later at dinner, everybody meets up in the main house and Zoro tells Kalidor to his face that he thinks he has seen him at a bar somewhere before. But Kalidor doesn't know what he's talking about. And then this one dinner guest tries to speak to Kaya about some urgent family business. But Kalidor interrupts them and tells him to not bother Kaya with work issues on her birthday. The servants then announce that dinner is served and everybody heads into the dining room, sitting down. Kaya says she wants to try, but some of the guests are eating. But Kalidor tells her that she can't go off of her super strict meal plan and can only eat this nasty looking soup instead. And that's when Nami interrupts and tells Kalidor that Kai should be able to eat whatever she wants. But that's when Luffy interrupts and asks Kaya about her ship that Usopp mentioned. Kaya tells him that at midnight tonight, she will become the sole owner of not just the ship, but the whole shipyard, making her even more filthy rich. Luffy congratulates her and then randomly reveals that they are pirates making Usopp spit out his drink in shock. He gets on the table and announces that him and his crew are headed to the Grand Line to find the One Piece treasure and wants Kaya's ship in order to get there. But poor, poor Kaya starts coughing at all of the confusion and Kalidor gets mad at Luffy for making her sick and he yells at them to leave at once. But Kaya begs them to let them all stay the night instead. With their asses covered for now, they stay the night. And later that night, one of Kaya's dinner guests goes to confront Kalidor and tells him that he must speak with Kaya at once about her family's ship yard before midnight because some of the paperwork doesn't make sense. Kalidor tries to calm him down, but it doesn't work, forcing him to reveal who he really is. And that's when he dashes behind this guy and stabs him with his five-bladed claws, brutally killing him. Elsewhere, Zoro bumps into Luffy and says that he's looking for a drink, hungry himself. Luffy tags along as the two try to find the kitchen. Nearby, Nami works on stealing all of the valuables in the house, and that's when she suddenly hears incoming footsteps and quickly hides in this room nearby. But in doing so, she accidentally entered Kaya's room, who has now caught her red-handed. 
Kaya thinks she is really a pirate, but Nami gets insulted and says that she hates pirates. And Kaya tells her that she can have whatever she wants since they are friends of Usopp, which means that they are friends of hers. Nami thinks it's sus, but quickly warms up to Kaya, and they quickly make conversation about their lives and troubles. Meanwhile, though, Saru and Luffy finally find the kitchen and spot Usopp hanging out, and he asks them if they really are going after the One Piece treasure, and Luffy offers him a spot on his team. Gosh, this guy will let anybody in. But Usopp says that he has to watch over Kaya, and then they make small talk, and he basically reveals that he loves Kaya without realizing it. Her parents mysteriously died a few years ago, and ever since then, Kalidor has watched over her and her parents' house. And Zoro thinks something is strange about that guy, and that's when Luffy notices that Usopp is a great shot, and he reveals that he learned his skills from his dad, who was a pirate named Yasop the Great. Stunning Luffy, and he realizes that he knows Usopp's dad, since he was a part of Shank's crew many years ago, and Zoro then tells them that he needs wine, so Usopp takes him to the wine cellar, while Luffy stays back to finish off this giant pot of delicious looking soup. Zoro and Usopp finally reach the cellar, but that's when they discover this corpse laying in plain sight, and it's still warm. Zoro then notices that this man has been stabbed five times. He's seen this style of murder before, and that's when Kalidor shows up armed with five blades on each hand and his minions right behind him. And Zoro finally remembers where he's seen him before, on a wanted poster. He then announces that this guy's real name is Kuro, Captain of the Black Cat Pirates, with a 16 million Barry reward, and tells them he pretended to die at the hands of the idiot Axe Hand Morgan, so that way he could hide out from the law. Zoro prepares for combat, but Kuro says that him and his plans cannot be stopped. The kid attacks him but misses, and he tries for another hit, but quickly gets knocked out by one of Kuro's minions, leaving Usopp all alone and helpless. Thinking quick, he barely escapes through this hole, and the minions worry that he'll alert the town. But Kuro says, ah, not to worry. He says that boy's cried wolf all his entire life, and then he orders them to get rid of Zoro's body outside. They then carry Kaya's dead business friend and Zoro down into the dark hole, including his signature swords. Minutes later, he wakes up in shock and stares at his terrifying future if he doesn't escape this hole. Elsewhere, Usopp finally reaches the main town and tries to tell everybody that pirates are on the island. But this one local tells Usopp that he's lied too many times before, and now thinks he's only doing it to get attention since his daddy left him years ago. No one believes him, and Usopp crumbles. But that's when he runs into twitchy face Kobe again and his marine crew, who says that they just reached the island and are looking for a pirate. Kobe tells Usopp that he believes him, and Usopp tells Helmepo here that Kuro, the black cat pirate, is on this island. But of course he thinks he's crazy, saying that his father, the Axe Hand Morgan, killed him years ago. And he gets mad at Kuro and says that they need to focus on finding the Straw Hat Pirate instead. And that's when Usopp recognizes the name and tells them that the Straw Hat Pirate is his friend and he can lead them to him if they leave now. Meanwhile, back in Kaya's room, the two girls get along and she tells Nami that she should join her for breakfast tomorrow and then she says goodnight to her and they just are, oh, best girlfriends now. And that's when heading out, Nami has a change of heart and ends up being oh so good and returns all the items she stole, at least keep one. Gosh. A little bit later, she comes across Luffy passed out in the kitchen. A noise of people are heard incoming, and she quickly hides in this cupboard, and overhears the minions enter, and they reveal their true plans. They mention that Luffy ate some of the poisonous soup, and is now dying minute by minute, and that Zoro's body has been disposed of outside. Suddenly, everyone hears a knock at the front door. Kuro enters and tells them to stay put, while he goes to check it out. Checking out the front of the house, he discovers the marines and tries to play it cool. They tell him that Usopp here has accused him of being a pirate, and introduces himself as Kalidor, the butler, and says he has no idea what they are talking about, and then they inspect his clothes and his hands, and the marines don't see anything piratey about him, and Kalidor explains that Usopp is sick in the head, ever since his daddy left him as a kid. Usopp begs the marines to listen to him, but Helmepo has had enough, and he says that they are looking for a straw hat pirate on this island, and Kalidor eagerly tells them that a person fitting that description did raid the house earlier, and they captured him, and he tells his people to bring Luffy to the front of the house. Quickly wiping off his mouth, they hand over Luffy to the pirates, horrified that no one will believe him. Usopp runs off, yelling that pirates have invaded the island, and the marines take Luffy, and Kalidor tells them that he has other things to do, and tries to close the door on them. Back in the main kitchen, Nami continues to wait for her chance to strike, and that's when this girl enters the kitchen, and she uses this opportunity to sneak out of the cupboard, and knocks her out cold, but realizes that the sound from the kitchen has now been heard throughout the entire house. Okay, at this point, we are so screwed. The only way that I would save us all is by destroying literally everything here in the most chaotic, piratey way possible.
possible. <laughs> Let me explain. Kuro here has been the butler for Kaya for three years and has been wanting to inherit her family fortune, making him the biggest gold digger out there. But it makes no sense how Kaya never thought to go see a doctor for sickness. But anyways, Kuro here is the leader of a horrifying crew and has basically been undercover for three years. This makes him a legit psycho. It means that I would work on trying to escape and get help first by being evil as hell. If I was Nami, I would first get a weapon and then get to work on starting a fire within the kitchen itself first before carrying some of the flame into another area of the home and would carry a big bottle of something flammable along with me. Right now we can't escape and we can't afford to fight a catman killer. This means that our best bet would be to force as much attention onto this house as possible from the outside. Town folk, people, the marines, and to force them to get out of the house. This will allow us to escape from setting the kitchen and the surrounding area on fire. I would work on grabbing a blanket to cover my face from smoke and would hide out near the front of the entrance in a small room or behind some kind of cover. And once Kuro and his guys head out, I'll wait for them to leave the house, follow them from behind, before throwing the flammable liquid we're carrying onto Kuro, lighting the flames nearby, catch them on fire, while I run towards town for help. Because think of it this way, sometimes you have to sacrifice a few cows in order to make a good steak. Outside, everyone hears a strange bang inside the house. He politely closes the door on the marines, and he goes to check it out. Upstairs, Usopp ends up sneaking into Kaya's room and tells her what's really going on, and who Kalidor really is, but she doesn't believe him, and he begs her to listen, but she says, nah and pimp slaps him, saying he should leave. He tries, but then turns around and ends up not running away from his problems for the first time in his life. And he tells her that he will stay with her until he knows she's safe. And meanwhile, Kuro reaches the kitchen and gets told by his minions that Nami is on the loose and has overheard everything. And that's when the clock strikes midnight. And with young Kaya finally being 18, he tells him that Kaya now officially owns the shipyard. And once they kill her, he will own her empire instead. And they begin to lock the entire house down trapping everyone inside. Upstairs, Usopp realizes that they are trapped, right as Nami busts in and tells them that Kalidor's real name is Kuro and that he is coming to kill her for her shipyard, making Kaya realize that her butler has been poisoning her through food for years. And Usopp was right, and Kaya then comes up with an idea and helps them escape her room using her secret tunnel, right as Kuro enters, not seeing anyone in the wall. The gang keeps it moving, but Kaya then coughs, and Kuro knows where they are. He tries to rip her apart through the wall, but they run away just in the nick of time. Meanwhile, the Marines make their way back to their boat with Luffy, and that's when Kobe tells them that something doesn't feel right about Kalidor, but they think he's just being crazy. And Luffy then wakes up and throws up all the poison out, making him finally useful once again. Zoro finally wakes up, and then he thinks about his epic backstory about losing his best friend that drove him to become the best swordsman, blah blah blah, not important, moving on. He finally gains enough balls to climb up and out of this well, and finally escape. Nearby, Luffy tries to tell Kobe that he needs to go save his friends first, but Kobe says that he has orders, right as Zoro reaches them and easily knocks out most of the marines. Freeing Luffy, he tells Kobe that he must go save his friends and leaves him, entering back into the mansion. They split up. Back inside, Nami and the gang reach this control room and try to disable the house security measures, alerting Kuro to their location. Nami then hears Kuro coming from down the hall and quickly tells the group to hide. He then walks in and makes the classic bad guy speech, telling them he will kill them all and that Kaya is weak and blah 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 is not bored. Kaya takes a weapon and gets ready to attack Kuro. Even though Nami begs her not to. The two run out from cover, but Kuro easily catches them off guard and gets ready to kill them both right here. And then Usopp in the back fires a slingshot right at Kuro, but he catches it. Rushing at him, he knocks Usopp out. Just outside, Zoro runs into both minions and he takes them both out at the same time, dodging every move and combo they throw at him while he dances with his blades. And then he goes to find Nami and the rest of the squad. Back in the control room, Kuro tries to kill Kaya, but he finally gets stopped by Luffy, who reaches them just in time. He tries to duel Kuro, but figures out out his true powers, and Kuro then tries to break Luffy with psychological warfare, telling him that being a pirate means always having to watch your back from the law and your friends. But Luffy says that being a pirate is about adventure and freedom, and anyone who gives up on their dreams doesn't deserve to call themselves a pirate, including Kuro. Okay, we're in a sticky situation, but at this point I would kill our enemy by leveraging his physiology against him. I'm talking about Luffy. Luffy here may be a stand-up guy, but the moment I see some adult using cat claws as a bona fide weapon, I really gotta root for him, because Kuro's tactics here are dog shit. He's the definition of a grade A monologue villain who ducks around too much from the beginning. Even the moment when the clock striked midnight, he walked through the whole mansion on his way to kill Kaya in her room. When he could have just used his super speed to reach her in 10 seconds and get the job done and call it a day. If I was him, I would have first taken the fight in a less enclosed area against Luffy because of our choice of weapons. And speed means that we would do better in fighting in open space or even outside. Especially when you consider that we can't run and slash. Only stop and slash. It means we're 
not really that powerful. Luffy's ranged, but direct attacks means that his method of fighting favors this environment more. I would have used our super speed to head to the kitchen and bring me a bag of flour, using this to throw into Luffy's face, and he will likely react and destroy the flour bag, causing the flour to get flown into the air, making it harder to breathe and see. Using that distraction is what I will use to then sneak up from behind and stab this rubber boy in the back. Checkmate. And that's when Luffy concentrates his hearing and sends a flying punch to Kuro, knocking him back and pissing him off the last time. All the while, Zoro continues to fight Kuro's minions, kicking their ass again. And then he jumps kicks and takes them both out. Back in the control room, Luffy dodges Kuro's last moves as he quickly runs out of breath. And Luffy then grabs both of his paws and uses his gum gum bell headbutt move, knocking him out of the window and saving the day. He then leads everyone to the front, meeting up with Zoro and the rest of the bad guys. They realize they need to get the hell out of here before the Marines come back. And Kaya offers her ship to them for free. Well, you look at that. Luffy was right. He leads them to the dock and lets Luffy secure his fancy new ride for the next part of their journey. He asks Usopp to tag along with them, but he says that he needs to watch over Kaya, and she says that she doesn't need no man and can wash the shipyard by herself. And that's when the two get cute and awkward for the last time together. And then Usopp plants a big one right on her. And that's when everyone sets sail and prepares to head to the Grand Line, unaware of the horrors and enemies, new and old, they will soon face. But what do you think about the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to check out our How To Be playlist.